Okay, so far we've learned about the conservation of mechanical energy. We haven't really included other types of energy besides mechanical energy. So just to review, we have mechanical energy. which is my potential energy, and we're talking about gravitational potential energy, and my kinetic energy. Okay, but obviously we know that this is only for a closed, isolated system, and we have other things happening while we have those other types of energies. So these other things I'm referring to are called my non-conservative forces, or my dissipative forces. And what I mean by non-conservative forces or dissipative forces is I mean forces that are not included or reduce the mechanical energy. They don't reduce the total energy, but they reduce the mechanical energy. Okay, so we can write this down. Reduce mechanical energy but not total energy okay these forces include my frictional force air resistance have also sound energy, thermal energy, which frictional force does provide, um, and other types of other non-conservative forces. Um, we're going to focus on friction, though, for this lesson. Okay, so friction. Well, we know that friction goes in the opposite direction of the movement, right? So if I was, if I had a box sliding across a surface, I know that my velocity is moving this way, and my friction is moving the opposite way. Okay, so because we know that this is going the opposite direction of the movement, we can say that friction is negative work. Okay, so we know that work is force times displacement. And if we have a movement going in this direction and friction is going the opposite direction, we say that it's negative the force of friction times that displacement. Okay, so this is equal to negative work. Okay, so what does this mean? How do I put this in a formula? So the formula we have, we know that we have our mechanical energy. Okay, so we have, let's say, our kinetic energy initial plus our potential energy initial. And we know this is equal to our kinetic energy final plus our potential energy final. But if we're including friction in this situation, we have to include our force of friction times our displacement. So this is the work done by friction. Okay. So like I said before, though, since this is going opposite the direction of the movement, this number we have to include the direction in our force. So this force of friction is a vector. So we have to include the direction. Okay. So let's apply this to an example. Okay, 
let's say, okay, my example is, child who's on a slide. Okay. Okay. And this child is over here. And the mass of this child is 21.7 kilograms. Okay. The height of this slide is 3.5 meters. Okay. If I said that the child reaches the bottom of the slide at a velocity of 2.2 meters per second, my question to you is how much thermal energy due to friction was generated in this process? Okay. So, using the equation I just previously told you, I know that I have my kinetic energy initial plus my potential energy initial equals my kinetic energy final plus my potential energy final plus my force of friction times my displacement. Okay? Or you can just call this work of friction. Okay. So we know that when this person starts, let me fix this. When this person starts up here, they have an initial velocity of zero. So we know because my equation for kinetic energy is one half mv squared, this is going to be zero. My potential energy is mgh. My kinetic final is one half mv final squared. My potential energy is going to be zero because it's right above the ground. So we're going to assume that height is zero. So my potential energy is also going to be zero. And then I have this work done by friction. Okay, I'm just going to call it wf. Okay, so we know that the mass is 21.7 kilograms. I'm going to just say G. Everybody knows that G is 9.8 meters per second squared. My height is 3.5 meters. I set this equal to 1 half M, which is 21.7 kilograms. V, which is given to me, it's 2.2 meters per second, and I add, oh, I forgot my squared, and I add the work done by friction. Now, I'm not asking for the force of friction at this point. I'm only asking for the work done by friction, okay? So, there's no reason to break down this equation right here and divide by displacement or divide by force of friction. All I'm looking for is this total work of friction, okay? So, of course, I'm going to use my calculator to find all of this. Um, I have 21.7 times 3.5 times 9.8. I get 744.31. This is in joules. And I have 1 half times 21.7 times 2.2 meters per second squared. And for this, I get... 52.51 joules, and then I also have my work by friction. Now I can solve for my work done by friction. Okay, I minus 52 on each side, 52.51, and I solve for this, I get 691.5 eight zero joules. So the work done by friction
description is still in joules because I'm talking about work, okay? Which is the thermal energy, basically. This is a thermal energy provided by that friction. Thermal energy can come from lots of different things. It can come from any types of things. It depends on a whole bunch of, a whole bunch of different variables. But in this case, I was asking for the thermal energy due to friction, and this is what my answer is. So in class tomorrow, you will need to be ready to do different problems like this and have any questions you have for me ready to go. Um, I hope this was helpful towards you and meaningful, and I will see you tomorrow.